Hello and welcome to the Gap of Rohan Corsair build. In this video I'm going to teach you how to make a T2 bomber snipe with good eco. So if the snipe fails, you still have competitive eco to keep playing. And if the snipe works, then it's ideal, right? So far our ACU has reclaimed a realistic amount of wreckages in the center. And this is the standard eco setup. If you want to know how to get there and you have no idea yet, then you want to watch the Gap of Rohan Eco Slot tutorial, which I provided in this playlist, video number one. So I'm using this exact setup, and let's continue with what is different in this very build. We are going for a total of four T2 mass extractors. One is ringed from the start, and we need two land factories. These two land factories produce engineers' land stuff. We have one engineer building a radar on the hill, pretty standard. And the air factory is producing five interceptors and three scouts. The first scout can scout right away, and the other two scouts will scout later. Our five interceptors will patrol on the hills and in the center to ensure that we don't get scouted. Of course, your air player can uh, help you with denying enemy scouts, but since this is gap, he most likely won't do it, so you need to do it yourself. If you get scouted while you are on a Corsair setup, that's very tragic, because the enemy can uh, drop art in your base, and you're going to be very vulnerable to attacks while you are building the Corsairs, or before you have them, right? It's important that our SEU is not going to get any upgrade. So no T2 upgrade, no gun upgrade, no stealth upgrade, nothing, right? You should not think about it as you have to defend the center. Because you don't, right? With this build, you will be the one who kills, not the one who defends. And if they attack you, you build a wall, you build a PD, you build a power storage, and your ACU can overcharge and tank, and nothing will happen. If they attack you with even more T1 units, then you can go T2 and make T2 gunships and kill them all. So T1 spam usually not a problem, and by the time the enemy has T2 spam, you have killed them. That's why you don't need any defenses in middle at all. What's happening now is flexible eco management. Stalling right now, so I'm pausing engineers, pausing the factory upgrade that's going to T2. And I'm building power generators. How many power generators am I building? Well, it's called flexible eco management, so I have no fixed number. I am just building power generators until I no longer need them. If the bar is empty and negative, I pause some engineers and the factory itself, and the other engineers are building power generators. See? Pause them, no longer stalling or just very slightly, and the upgrade is about to finish. And basically, you want to build power generators until you don't power stall, and you want to add engineers until you start having a perfect mass balance. Right now, we don't have many engineers yet. It looks like a lot, but actually it's not. That's why we have this mass extractor upgrade. As soon as we have more engineers, we can pause this mass extractor upgrade, build more power generators and add more engineers to the Corsair production. Right? Just so we don't waste any mass, we pause and unpause this mass extractor and put all the mass we get in there all the mess that's not going into the Corsairs, right? So now it's time to talk about benchmarks. Your benchmark is going to be 8 Corsairs at minute 8 with reasonable eco, which means at least 4 T2 maxes. Most people, especially people who don't sandbox their build first or like have a specific build order, are not going to be able to build 8 Corsairs by minute 8 and have good eco. That's why you're here, right? You want to be able to do this. It's important that you understand how to use Corsairs. A Corsair deals around 1000 damage. So if you attack a T1 ACU, then you can usually kill it in one and a half passes if you have around 10 Corsairs. So some of the Corsairs are probably going to be shot down on the enemy side of the map and attacking a T1 ACU with 10 Corsairs around minute eight or nine, it's usually going to result in a safe kill. 
If the ACU is T2, you want to add like two extra Corsairs, meaning you sent 12 Corsairs instead of 10. Stuff gets more complicated when they have shields. If they are T2 shields, mobile shields, you add four Corsairs. If they are stationary shields, it depends a little on the faction, but usually you send around seven or eight extra Corsairs, meaning you send like 10 plus 8, 18 at a T1 ACU and 20 at a T2 ACU. But usually you should try to target the ACU that's unprotected, where there is no anti-air, no shield, no fighters and no upgrade. That's the ideal situation. So in every game you will have some ACUs that are well defended and some ACUs that are not so well defended. And usually you shouldn't be picky and just kill the less well defended ACUs first. As soon as you get a kill, you build a T2 transport and put some engineers in it and reclaim the base of the player you killed. If enemy engineers are trying to reclaim the base, then you build a T1 PD. And if they are T1 bombers, you ask your allies for air support that denies the enemy bombers. Building anti-air and PD usually costs too much time, so you are here for the reclaim, not to build a base when you drop it. right? That's why you should prioritize reclaiming and only build a PD when necessary, but no anti-air, and let the fighters do the rest. If you have this mass income from the reclaim of the dead player, then you want to have a T2 engineer directly after the, f uh, the transport building T2 power. And this T2 power will be assisted by many engineers. When you have T2 power and the reclaim coming in, you can upgrade multiple maxes to T2 or even some to T3. And this is going to give you great eco. So you're starting with a four versus four situation, but after killing somebody, it is a four versus three situation. And when you then even reclaim his base, you have double the eco of everybody else. And that's why it's essentially going to be a five versus three situation. That's how you can imagine it. It's a bit rounded, but you get the idea. You can either continue building Corsairs and kill another player, or when you think they are going to be able to counter your next Corsair snipe, then you build a second T2 power generator and upgrade your ACU to RAS upgrade to go for T3 air. And, and this is how you can stay in the game with very competitive eco. Beginners cannot usually counter this build, and even experienced players sometimes have trouble. Especially if multiple people in your team use Corsair build, it is very difficult to counter it. What happens if the enemy uh, has fighters, scouted the Corsairs, and is moving the fighters to your side of the map? Well, you don't use your Corsairs as air-to-air -air weapons, because they are really bad as air-to-air -air weapons. You try to fly over Allied T2 flag, you try to hide the Corsairs in a corner, for example, or you fly through Allied interceptors that are taking care of your tail. Again, you should not engage in air-to-air -air combat with Corsairs, because they are very, ga uh, very bad at this. And this is all you need to know. You will snipe many people with this build. Just make sure you also learn other aspects of the game, because there are some people who reached 1600 rating with Corsair builds, and they cannot do anything else, and this is very tragic. So make sure not to become one of these, but uh, also make sure that you use it enough to make people afraid of you and teach them how to counter it. Because I'm very tired of teammates who die to Corsairs, or I'm very tired of situations where I do to, uh, die to Corsairs, because my team is not doing anything to help. So let's educate these peasants and uh, get some nice snipes. Good luck, have fun.